What's up folks, today I'm here with Call of the Sea, a game that sold a lot of us with a design we had to lay our eyes on, a story that seemed like it would grip us, and of course the puzzles. Who doesn't love puzzles? Actually, a lot of people don't like them, but either way, if you enjoyed this video, why not subscribe and help me out? If you would prefer an audio-only version, the link is down below, along with the link to my Discord server. Is Call of the Sea worth $20? Well, I'm about to tell you. My name is Tanner, and this is For Your Money, a different kind of review. What's the usual? That's right, story is first. Nora has a disease of an unknown origins, and the symptoms are she feels fatigued rather instantaneously when she begins to walk, but most notably, she has spots on her hands. Living her life miserably just as her mother had, her husband Harry travels to seek out what doctors couldn't, and that's a cure for his best friend, his wife. His travels take him to an island east of Tahiti that no one likes to go to. The locals even say it's cursed. Now, Harry has been gone for quite a while, and after not writing back to Nora for quite some time, she decides that she's going to set out and find out what became of Harry and if there truly is a cure for her disease. What she finds out is more than an eye-opener. The story for this game is more than a love story about going to no ends for the one that you hold near and dear to you. It's a well-written piece of emotional art. One that touches on all of our feelings. Throughout the entire game, you get to know Nora for who she is, but you also get to know Harry. Even though you're playing as Nora trying to find him, she still tells you about his personality, and you get more of a sense of who he is based on her reactions from the notes that he left at his abandoned campsites. I mean, overall, this story nails it. I enjoyed every minute of it from start to finish. A damn fine team of writers, they have no doubt. The gameplay for Call of the Sea is child's play to talk about, but a lot less simple to you know, actually do. The main features are walking, running, puzzle solving, and inspecting slash reading tons of world items. I'm not going to touch on the walking here because a game like this, and specifically this game, it fits better into the design part. So, puzzles. If you love a good puzzle, then this game should interest you. The puzzles are intricate, well thought out, and they add to the elements of the story. Now, don't get me wrong, I've played a lot of puzzle games, and this is not the one to start on. I had to pause my game and I'd walk around my room a few times and just think. I had to process a lot of what was going on, what information I had, and what I needed to do with such info. But this also isn't your next mist either. This is way easier than the puzzles from any Cyan game. And of course, with all the puzzles comes, you know, quite a bit of reading. For the most part, it's not a ton of reading. Every so often, you're going to get three paragraphs to read, but usually it's two to four sentences. And all of these are either insightful to the buildup of Harry's character and his crew helping him out with the expedition or helping you better understand the puzzle at hand. So be sure to read thoroughly. Overall, the gameplay was spot on. The puzzles are enjoyable. I mean, there's nothing like being stuck on a puzzle and then finally figuring it out. Personally, for me, I think it's better than beating any boss in any game. It just feels more cognitively rewarding, which I treasure above most things. And I love to read, so of course I had no issue studying some of these letters and notes left behind. They're, they're intriguing. The design for Call of the Sea, a lot of us were excited about it. I like the effort they put into it, but this game is highly buggy here. So let me go ahead and get the compliment out of the way. The art style of the game, it's exceptional. It's truly some eye candy. And it reminds me a lot of Sea and Thieves, but more in depth with the art direction. Now for the sound and soundtrack, this is where a lot of the issues come in. The game starts and I am astounded by the soundtrack and it just keeps getting better and better and the sound of the game does as well, but in the later chapters, the audio cuts out. There's no music, no world noise, just complete silence. Minus your footsteps that sound like they were ripped from Minecraft, but uh, you guys will hear it in a second. So the voice acting is similar too. So the voice acting started good, but my issues are one, when Nora walks, she obviously talks. And whenever you walk too far ahead while she's completing a sentence, another sentence will cut off the previous one, which is why subtitles will always be vital to me for this exact reason. Number two, some of the editing to the voice acting is not complete. You'll hear words that are cut short. And I, I don't know how this happens, but it happened in this game. Another issue are some of the bugs and crashes. I crashed quite a good bit and there are a few bugs. A couple to name, there's a record player that Nora mentions as playing her and Harry's favorite song, but instead of that song playing, it plays Harry's distress from the boat that wrecked. And then another one is the credits cut out for me, so I was watching the picture in the background and the names were not there. Now going back to the art and graphics, 
Walking around, though I love the art design, there's a lot of pop-in graphics and colors. Now, of course, this is all what I experienced. Maybe other people didn't have these issues, and that's completely expected. But I did, and it hindered a lot of what was supposed to make this game magical. Now, with my problems coming from the design, I'm going to show a little bit more clips than usual, but nothing over the top. So here's some footage of the overall design. Let's give it a shot. John this McCormack's is a distress call Powerpoint? from the Everhart Expedition. Her favorite song. 74 nautical miles east of Tahiti. So the guide left the expedition. That would explain the workshop on the White Sand Beat, where I arrived. So the guide left the expedition. That would explain the workshop on the White Sand Beat, where I arrived. can enter this tunnel. With all said and done, this game to me personally is worth $10 out of $20. Now, I love the story, the gameplay was fun, but the design of the game is where a lot of the score comes in with games like these, and unfortunately, I had a lot of issues, and like I said, not everyone will because that's just how bugs work. Now, without these crashes and other issues in the design, this would easily be worth full price to me. So, if this does get an update, this is an easy buy, but until then, this is a tenner from me. That's all I got, folks. If you enjoyed this video, why not subscribe? Otherwise, hit that thumbs down. Till next time, fellas.